Welcome back to Photoshop. And today we're gonna to take a look at artboards. And artboards are used probably a lot in graphic design, but very infrequently in photography. But occasionally I might be creating or trying to create something like a logo or variations of tones on an image, whether for me or to show clients. And artboards are super helpful. The problem is, I don't actually have the artboard icon over here in my toolbar because I use it so infrequently, but I can just come down here to these three little dots and click that so I can get that back up. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna create a whole bunch of different artboards and on each artboard, we're gonna create a different variation of this image so that we can pick the one that we like best because let's say we're not sure what version we like or maybe our client likes. To do this, it's really easy. First thing I'm gonna do is actually just go ahead and you will notice that I go to image, image size, and I've made this simple for myself. I'm gonna go ahead and make this 3000 pixels. So it's 3000 by 2000 pixels, that's good, I'm gonna hit Command A, which is select all. Command C, which is copy, because we're gonna need that here in a second. So let's go ahead and start creating the artboard. So we're gonna go up here to file and go to new. And right here you can see I've got 3000 by 2000. That's the exact same size as the image. You don't have to worry about resolution. When you use pixels, it doesn't make a difference. We have RGB color. I'm gonna go ahead and change my background to white just to make, so, just to make it simple. And what we're gonna do is come up right here. You can see there's something called artboards and we're gonna go ahead and select this. If you do not select this, it won't create the little artboard icon in the layers panel. So we'll go ahead and hit create. And you can see right over here, we've got this artboard now and inside the artboard, we've got this shape. But what we want is to create a whole bunch of these shapes. Right now, we just have one. So let me zoom out a little bit. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. You could simply copy and paste these. You could come up here to the artboard and you could drag it down onto the new icon. You could hit Command J to do the same thing. I'm just gonna hit Command Z to go back. So the easiest way to create more artboards is simply to come up here where it says artboard and click on that icon or word that we see right there. And you'll notice it got plus, 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 plus. I'm gonna zoom out because we're gonna create more. What this means is whichever one of these you create, it's gonna, if you click plus here, it's gonna create one above. So if I click to the right, it's gonna create one to the right, create one to the right, one there, one there, one there, one there, click here, click here, all right? So I'm gonna hit command zero just to center that out. Now I've got all these artboards and you can see we've got this in reverse order, nine through one in artboard. The next step is to add the image to all the artboards, which is really easy because we already copied it. So we'll just do this in reverse order. I don't even need to know which one of these is nine, but you can see right above this, this is nine, this is eight, this is seven. So I'm gonna use the paste in place command, meaning I would go to edit, paste special into place, which is command shift V, and most likely control shift V on a PC and bam, it's gonna paste that in. Then I click on artboard eight. I'm gonna do the quick key, which is command shift V. And boom, just like that, we've got all our images up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip one. We're gonna leave that as the black and white. And then I'm gonna come up here to the next image and I'm gonna go ahead and open this panel because I've got a whole bunch of presets right here. So these are just basically split tones that I've created as actions. And I'll show you on the last one how to create one, but we'll go ahead and just click this and that's gonna run this little process through and boom, just like that, we've added a split tone. So then we'll come up to three, and we'll do the next one. I'm just gonna run through here and do all of these. All right, and for number nine up here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I basically created this split tone. I'm using what's called a gradient map. So if you come up here to this little icon, we'll click gradient map. 
it gives us this effect. It's actually applying this gradient. We don't want that gradient. Pick a new one. So let's pick this color. That looks pretty good. We'll hit OK. Now the colors are flip-flopped. So we're gonna come over here to where it says reverse. And I'm gonna click reverse. Now the colors look normal. We're gonna change the blending mode. So I'm gonna go blending mode, color. And I'm just gonna lower that opacity and boom, just like that, we've got our gradient. So there's just another slight variety on our board. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the same one that we created before. We're gonna make sure artboards is selected. And we're gonna go ahead and hit create. And then I'm just gonna command minus down a little bit so you can see what's going. Now before we clicked on this and we just clicked these little pluses and we can do the same thing, but we can change the size of these artboards as well. So what you would wanna do is make sure that your properties is available. So right here, I've got my properties and right down here, it says set artboard to presets. So we have presets also available. So you can come in here and you can see there's all these different presets. So if we wanted to do this, for an iPad Pro, we could click this and it would automatically size this to the size of an iPad Pro. And I could come in here and I could click a different one and we could select a different preset. So in this case, we'll do a Mac icon and we get this little teeny thing right here. I can just hit space bar, move that back in the side. You don't have to create artboards that are all exactly the same size. You can create different size artboards, custom artboards to sets, anything that you would want in the program. I just wanted to mention that you don't have to create all the same size artboards that you can create various size artboards and use presets when using artboards inside Adobe Photoshop. So what we have now is our original black and white version in a whole bunch of different color variants that we have that we can either look at and decide what we like or show our clients. So this would be something you could easily like screenshot or save and you could even send that to them if they liked it to find out which one they like. It has the little artboard number above it so they'll be able to see which one is which. So this is how you create artboards in photography, though we don't use them a lot as a photographer. If you're a graphic designer, this is something that you could use a lot because you could do mock-ups for a variety of different items and you could see everything on one page. So you have that cohesiveness through your images. Well, hopefully you've learned a little bit about artboards and how to create them and how to use them for photography. If you found this video helpful, if you could give us a thumbs up, that would be great. If you have any comments or questions, you could leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.